Hey, it's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the PolyLang plugin to add translations of any content on your website. And usually people use this to have a multilingual site. And so if you have, say, English, for example, but you also want to have all your posts in French, this gives you the capability not to translate them automatically, but to have your site be able to differentiate between an English and a French version of the same post or the same content and people can actually select the language from a little widget that comes with the plugin and it's pretty cool. It's easier for me to show you what it is than to explain it, so I'm going to show you right now. So we're in the WordPress dashboard. First thing we have to do is install the plugin and we're going to go to plugins and then add new and I'm going to type in polylang in the search bar for the keyword and it's this very first one right here with the parrot. I'm going to click on install now and once it's installed we can click activate before I do I just want to show you that there's a lot of other plugins as add-ons to this plugin. So as you can see, there's uh, PolyLang theme strings, PolyLang assets, assets URL fix, Contact Form 7 editions, WPML, or WordPress Multilingual for PolyLang. There's a whole bunch of add-ons. We're just going to cover the base functionality of the core plugin, but feel free to explore any of these. And if you want me to do a tutorial on these specifically, just let me know in the comments below. But for now, I'm just going to click on Activate to activate this plugin. And now our plugin is activated and we have a new menu item over here called Languages. So I'm just going to click on uh, the Languages thing or the Languages link under the Languages plugin. And that takes us to languages that I have already set. And I set English, German, and French or Deutsch and Francais. And you can pick from this drop down any language that the plugin supports. And you can get a couple more through the WordPress files for the repository, I believe. But these are all the ones that are available for automatic download. And there's quite a few of them. So hopefully the one you need is in there. And then you just, let's just go through one of these. So Dansk, or what they speak in Denmark, the information is auto-filled. The language code will actually be part of your URL. So if someone switches languages on the site, this DA is going to go before or right after the domain name, but before the, the permalink for the content. And we're going to have a little flag that's going to show up in various places. I'm going to show you what that looks like in just a second. And if we look at uh, this code column here, for Deutsch, DE will appear right after the domain name, and then EN for English, FR for Francais. And then when you pick your languages, you just click on Add New. And we're going to have our language added to this list over here. So now we have all four of our languages. You can set the order of the languages as well. I haven't done that. But if you set the order, this is the order that they'll appear in the drop down menu in the widget that I'm going to show you how to install in just a second. So if you want to set that order, go for it. If you don't, that's fine. Just to get our setup done, we're going to install the widget right now. If we go to appearance and then widgets, we have a language switcher that was added to our available widgets. So we can drag and drop that right into the sidebar or you can put it in the footer. You can put it wherever you want, really. And we can give it a title, like pick a language. And you can display the language names. If you just have a, a handful of them, you can display them on the page right below this title. Or if you have lots, you can put them in a drop down. I always like to put mine in a drop down. Uh, if you don't put them in a drop down, you also can display the flags of the languages, which is pretty cool. So you could have actually just the flag show up. I'm going to choose that one actually. And then there's a bunch of other options. You can choose the ones that you want to choose. And we click on save. A cool additional feature is this widget displays for and you pick which language. So you could have this switcher show up as many times as you have languages and just change the title to match the language that you're switching for. I'm not going to do that right now. That's definitely an option available to you. And I'm just going to pop back to the string translations for this plugin settings to show you what those are. And this is where we have text that appears throughout the site, which is kind of part of the theme or part of the core WordPress functionality. And you can add the translations for those in here. Now these ones where they pull in uh, percent percent, that means they're replacing that with a variable. You don't really want to change those because those are automatically pulled in. And I'll show you, th th these are actually changed when you, when you update the posts. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Uh, the ones that don't have percent percent or that have other text as well, for example, you searched for search phrase, page, sep, site name, so you can translate the you searched for in all the different languages in here. And then the page not found, same thing. 
uh, you don't have to change HTML characters. They can change the home, archives. It pulls in all the, the data that's not easily changed on the site and pulls it in here so you can change it in here. And what you see in here is gonna depend on the theme you have and the plugin you have or the plugins you have running. It's just gonna pull in as much as it can so you can translate as much as it can. So this is where you translate the strings and there is the, the settings panel as well where you can do some more settings. So on the settings page, there are a lot of settings that you can play around with. The defaults are usually just fine. If you do wanna change some of these things, feel free to hop in here and do that. And it, it explains really well what they all are. Uh, one of the most important ones for me is detect browser language, which is activated by default. And it will detect on the browser what language your site or what language you prefer, not your site. So if you are running a browser that's running German language or French or Hindi or Spanish, or whatever language your browser is running, if your site has a language version for that, it will auto detect the language and display the appropriate language to the person. And that's a really cool feature. That's one of my favorite parts of this plugin actually. And another one that you can get with the pro version is you can share the same slug between translated posts and pages and terms. What happens currently with the free version is every post you translate, it gets a new URL. It can be the same, it can be the same slug, but it's going to be a different URL so that the site knows which one is which. However, the pro version, they have some fancy coding in there. So you have the same URL all the time. It just switches languages. For a lot of it, I actually prefer to have a unique URL because then you can actually have the URL in the specific language that you want. So I'm going to show you what I mean in just a minute. It's going to make more sense when I show you. Last thing I want to show you in the settings is Lingotech. And this is where you can choose a translation service. So if you don't want to translate all the text, you can hire one of these services. All of them are paid for. Uh, some of them have some free stuff. So this one has uh, free access for the first 100,000 characters. Same with this one. Here you bid on professionals to uh, do translation for you. And there's a need extra services tab down here. If you're interested in having someone translate, this is the place to look for it and always integrate with the plugin to make your life really, really easy. So moving on to actual posts. And what do we do? How do we translate these things? I'm gonna show you that right now. So when you have your posts in here, uh, you have a new column added. You have a, uh, well, not Canada flag, whatever flag nationality you have for your, for your translations you'll have up here. So I currently have Canada, Germany, France, and Denmark. And the ones with a pencil, that means I've created a translation. And if I click on this pencil, I can go and edit it. The ones with the check mark, that means that this row is that language. So this row is the German language translation. French has a pencil, which means I've already created that one. I can click on that to edit it. If there's a plus sign, it means no translation has been created for that post. So I've named them all accordingly. So Deutsch 5 is the translation of English 5 is the translation of French 5 down here. And all of them will have alternate check marks. So the French 5, as you can see, is checkmarked in the French column. The Deutsch 5, the checkmark in the Deutsch column. English 5 checked in the Canadian column. And all of them have a plus symbol for Denmark. So if I click on this plus, it takes me to a new post builder page where I'm gonna just say dance five. And on the right hand side with your languages, we see the linked translation pages. So each of these is a different page, different URL slug. You click on these pencils, you can go and edit them. Now I'm just gonna click publish to publish it. And now we have a language post or this, no, this number five post, we have it translated in all four of our languages. Now this language selector here will change the language of this specific post. So if this is the Dansk post, this is the Denmark version. We've got the Denmark title. That's good, that all matches up. If we click on any of these pencils, we can click on any of them and go to that language. So this is English 5, English 5. Here's the drop down for that. And then we can type in here in the, the actual text, we type in English language. It's gonna update that. And we can go to each one of these and we go through and we type in that translation. Unfortunately, with the plugin, the way it is default, you have to do this all manually. So either you or somebody you know needs to be able to write and, and read in these languages. But as long as that's true, then you can have your translation in each of these and it's really cool. So I'm just gonna add that one there, that's, that's enough for now. I'm gonna show you what this looks like on the front end in just a second. 
But what we also want to do is go to our categories and we can add different category languages. As we can see here, we now have an uncategorized un option for each language. Here's the slug uncategorized, uncategorized-de, -fr, -da, and we can edit these by clicking the edit button. But I'm just going to I'll make a new one. So I'm going to call it car. I'm going to make the English version first. Choose English. And down here, you can type things in here, but it's not going to do anything. So we could type in auto. We could type in what tour. And I don't know what car is in Danish. Call it car in Danish, I guess. So these won't actually do anything. I'm just showing this to, to show you what happens. But don't type your stuff in there because it won't actually do anything. We click on add category. As you can see, here under car, we only have the English version checkmarked. There's a plus symbol for all the others, which means the translation has not been created yet. If there is a pencil, like down here, it means the translation is created. So now we want to, we have our English version, want to click on the plus beside each one to create that language's version. And auto for German. And now as we, as we can see down here in the translations, we have car for English auto filled. And as we create these translations, each of these blanks are going to be auto-filled as we go. So we now have uh, auto for German. Click on the plus for French. You can click the plus on any one of these categories that are linked in language. It's a little confusing at first, but you'll get the hang of it. So now we have the French version. We have car and auto pre-filled. And when we click on the Danish version right now for the plus, it will have all the others refilled. Car in Danish or pre-filled, I mean. So we have the, all the others pre-filled, like I said. Click on Add Category. That's fantastic. We now have our car category in all the different languages in alphabetical order, of course, so our French one is way at the bottom. But now we have all our categories like that. And if we go back to our posts, we can actually set these categories for the language we want to set it for. So for the Dansk 5 one, let's say we want to edit the German version, we can then go down to categories and we have auto, which is the German version of the category. So it auto detects which category is the correct one for that language. So we click on update to add it to that category. And then if we click on the French version, just to prove it to you, click on the pencil for the French version, it's gonna have the French, available French categories down here. And then we just choose the one we want, click on update. Now we have that in the French category. You can go through each one and do that process over and over. I'm not going to bore you with that right now. We're actually going to go to the live site now and see what this actually looks like. So if you go to the home page, uh, for some reason, uh, my Chrome is auto detecting itself as French right now. I don't know why, but it is. So if I go to Google, everything's in French. I can't explain it. Anyway, we, we were taken to the French site because it auto detected that I was French. So it figures I'm French. We're taking to the French version of the website. And we're on the home page right now. And if we scroll down, we have that language picker, that widget that we created. And hopefully yours is in a better location. In the 2017 theme, it's putting it down at the bottom, probably because I messed with the CSS recently. But if we click on any of these versions, for example, the Canadian flag, will take us to the English version. So we have English 5, English 1, another post that I label as English, we click on the German flag. It's going to take us to the German version, Deutsch 5, Deutsch 2, Deutsch 1, and click all these flags. As long as you have a translation for those things, they'll show up here. And this does not mean you have to translate your entire site. So maybe you start just translating them one at a time, which is great. If someone clicks on the, the Danish version, but there's only one Danish post, then that's all that shows up, and that's perfectly fine. Also, like we saw before in the widgets, there's a lot of different options you can choose for this widget and how it displays, and that's all there is to the PolyLang plugin. And it's actually a really cool plugin if you want to translate your site. I hope this video helps you. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Please make sure you like this video, share on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out wplearnlab.com for more tutorials like this every single day. Talk to you soon.